how you've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Friday, July 6th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. Well, we had a quiet end to June and start to July in the Atlantic, but no more. We have two systems to watch here in the tropics, one of which you need a, a magnifying glass to find. Out here in the central Atlantic, we see hurricane barrel. Yes, a hurricane. Uh, this just became a tropical depression yesterday, and it was uncertain for a while whether it would develop at all, but it has done so. And uh, more unexpectedly yesterday, it strengthened substantially during the afternoon and then overnight hours. And uh, we can see a very, very tiny but intense little storm here. This is about as small as you get them. This is maybe it's not even a degree wide here. This is under 50 miles wide. Uncertain exactly how small uh, this is, but this rivals some of the smallest storms we've seen in the Atlantic. And uh, this is very reminiscent of Hurricane Danny in 2015, also a tiny hurricane that unexpectedly strengthened actually to Category 3 intensity that year in this same part of the basin. And uh, this is very similar to that evolution. The thing about small storms is they are rather unpredictable because they can spin up so quickly uh, due to mesoscale processes that can spin up vorticity when it's really tight and compact like this. Uh, but they can also uh, be destroyed rather easily as well. And that's the good news about this system is that even though it has become unexpectedly strong, um, it's also weak in quotes in the sense that it's fragile. So any kind of wind shear or dry air that impacts barrel will likely quickly cause its demise. And that's sort of expected to happen eventually here as the system journeys west-northwestward. This is expected to reach the Lesser Antilles sometime on Sunday or Monday. And uh, when it does so, will likely be encountering more hostile conditions than it faces now. Right now it has a bit of a moisture envelope around it. The, the monsoon trough goes sort of like this. There's moisture to the south side, dry air on the north side, and uh, for the moment it's not really being impacted by this dry air. But the farther north it gets, the more likely this dry air will start to get entrained. And in addition, its currently low shear environment is likely to change uh, as it gets farther west as well. This is the GFS upper level wind forecast at 200 millibars, uh, 60 hours out. This is on Sunday afternoon here. This is where barrel is, this L. And this is the upper level uh, outflow ridge above it, which you can see here. And this actually doesn't look too bad, right? There's very light flow. It's not really out of the west over the storm center. But remember, the system will be hauling westward at about 20 miles per hour at this point. And so there is actually westerly shear here, because if, it, if the low level flow is really fast out of the east, but the upper level flow is about calm, that's still a 20 knot shear. And so this will be experiencing um, increasing westerly shear as it nears the islands. And this will very likely weaken it in a quick fashion. If we go out to to the day after on Monday afternoon it's moving very quickly you can see just within a day it's moved this far and the the wind is really coming out of the southwest now in the Caribbean aloft and so this will really put on the shear uh, probably at least 30 uh, to 35 knots at this point and this will be weakening very quickly by this point and so although we will see a track that is likely to impact um, the Leeward Islands at least, unsure exactly where here yet, but probably somewhere from Martinique northward. We'll see impacts. The north side of the storm will be the stronger side because of the, uh, the trade winds here as the storm comes uh, from east to west. Uh, the strongest winds will likely be in this northern half. And whatever's left of it will cause gusty winds, perhaps over gale force, in the area that it moves through, especially on that north side. And so uh, even if it dissipates entirely, which is possible by the time it reaches the islands, uh, we'll likely see the equivalent of tropical storm conditions here either way in some of these islands. So stay tuned to the forecast uh, to see exactly which of these islands we'll see. Uh, the most uh, blustery conditions from barrel or the remnants thereof uh, in a few days. At this point, given that it's strengthened a bit here, it's likely to survive at least to remain a, a, a tropical storm here, but it will likely be weakening significantly on its way through. Okay, so that's barrel, and we'll continue to update over the next few days as this comes westward. But there's a second system to monitor in the Atlantic right now. Uh, that's Invest 96L, it's been dubbed, uh, here between Bermuda and the southeastern U.S. And we'll take a zoom in on that here. This is the other mesosector. We've got them both on the tropics today. 
and you can see some rotation with this disturbance. This is a little low that sort of formed out of an old upper level trough south of Bermuda and has been drifting westward over the last few days and hasn't really had a lot of convection with it until last night. Uh, this was a bare circulation yesterday because uh, this has been a pretty dry area of the Atlantic. The boundary layer has been dry, the mid troposphere is dry on the north side and uh, you can tell that here because all these little uh, curvy shaped clouds that you can see here, these are little outflow boundaries, all these little uh, pop-up showers are coming right back down because of the dry air and forming all of these little curved arc clouds they're called and these indicate outflow boundaries due to the downdrafts that are induced by the dry air arresting these convective updrafts and so you can see the evidence of the dry air here to the north uh, but as this thing has circulated yesterday the circulation was a little stronger than models expected and whenever you see a lot of spin over the ocean it's able to start recirculating air over that water and it starts evaporating moisture off the water surface and starting to re-moisten the atmosphere a bit so over enough time you can start to recondition the atmosphere such that it can support thunderstorm activity and so you're starting to see this here with 96 uh, where you're now getting convection near the center of circulation and this is already a closed low so this is not that far away from being a tropical depression and the National Hurricane Center has raised the odds of development to high 80 percent over the next five days and it, it wouldn't surprise me to see this develop um, either later tonight or tomorrow uh, given the organization that it already has. It just needs persistent convection that organizes enough and it will meet the technical definition of a tropical depression. If we look at the water vapor imagery here we see 96 and then an upper low uh, east of uh, Georgia moving toward the west backing away and we have a big ridge over the northwestern Atlantic and between these two features is a pocket of light vertical wind shear where 96L is and this is allowing this convection to to develop over the low center and help start to re-moisten the environment and so this should allow gradual improvement of the system's environment and gradual development of 96L over the next couple of days as it drifts northwestward toward North Carolina and this is where things get a little bit more difficult and this has only happened just recently uh, models prior to today expected this system to move northward a lot quicker than it is now forecast to do you can see this big front is coming down uh, through New England and uh, this was if the system were to move up east to Cape Hatteras tomorrow like it was originally expected to do it would be very easy for this front to just deflect the system northeastward harmlessly over the open ocean as it stands the system is expected to stay a little bit farther southwest now and that's going to make things a little more difficult if we look at the GFS forecasted low-level wind 850 millibar wind for tomorrow morning Saturday this is where 96 is possibly a tropical depression by this time our front is here as so this is a cold front pushing southward and if the system were up here like expected it's very easy for the southerly flow um, hitting the cold front and moving eastward to direct the storm eastward along the front and uh, harmlessly out into the northwestern Atlantic however this ridge is building in behind over the Midwest and so you can see a big H here and with the system farther west now there are competing steering influences so you have this ridge out to the east with southerly flow trying to take the system northeast and you have the easterly flow on the south side of this ridge trying to drag the system west and these competing steering influences on the storm are in a tug of war and this means that the overall steering current is weak and so the system is likely to stall or move slowly and drift around here and meander uh, just off of North Carolina for a while and so this is going to be a little bit harder to get rid of uh, than was expected even as late as yesterday and so by Monday on the model well it's it's still around it's still hanging out here a couple days later and you can see that this ridge to the north has now weakened as they often do as the front begins to dissipate here this ridge comes east and it it's pretty weak and uh, the consequence of this is that it's it's actually kind of hard to bring the storm right inland uh, into the eastern US it's it's not impossible to get this inland but it's it's a little hard to do so so it's very possible this just tries to stay offshore over the water for a while and drift around for a couple of days now what eventually happens is a new trough you can see the beginnings of it here in the Midwest moves into New England and a new southwesterly flow brings this out to sea and most models agree that this eventually happens however there's a lot of uncertainty with this trough models have been struggling with this pattern over the eastern US lately and they're currently adjusting toward what's hopefully more more 
more close to reality, but this is likely to continue to be uncertain over the next few days. And whenever steering currents are weak and, and tropical systems are sitting around and meandering, it's usually a lot harder to forecast exactly what's going to happen. So uh, there's really no guarantees here about whether or not it could actually come ashore, but it could be close enough to shore anyway to bring impacts to coastal North and South Carolina. And so if this does develop as is currently expected, uh, be aware that within a couple of days, late this weekend and certainly into Monday, we could start seeing blustery winds and rain, heavy rains over the coastal southeast U.S. in the Carolinas here. So keep an eye on the forecast as this is a developing situation that you should monitor at this point as it's only a couple of days out from potentially bringing some impacts to the coast. Uh, there will be uh, some hostile conditions uh, encountered by the system uh, by later in the weekend. This is on Sunday. As with any front, there's vertical wind shear associated with any front. And as this front comes down, two things happen. One is that you see this upper level flow out of the west associated with that vertical shear will likely bring higher shear to the system and perhaps uh, hinder development at that time. There will also be a lot of dry air behind the front. So if there's a cold front here, lots of dry cool air behind, that could get wrapped into the storm if it's spinning a lot here, and uh, that could also be a detrimental impact. So even if the system develops today or tomorrow, it could encounter some hostile conditions for a couple of days. The issue is if it hangs around long enough, those hostile conditions will then go away again. So later next week, if the system is still hanging out for a while, uh, it could have a chance to strengthen again uh, under more favorable conditions following that. But right now there are too many moving pieces to be certain about very much here. Honestly, this is a, a rather difficult forecast scenario. So we'll have to keep a, a close eye on, well, these are the wrong satellite pictures. Here we go. On this system over the next few days, we'll very slowly approach North Carolina, not likely to develop too rapidly, uh, but development is likely and some intensification and generation of uh, Adverse conditions, heavy rain, gusty winds could start occurring in the coastal Carolinas as soon as uh, Sunday. So keep an eye on the forecast as this develops. The National Hurricane Center and your local weather office will have the latest details for you as we continue to watch this system, along with Hurricane Barrel as it approaches the Lesser Antilles uh, later this weekend as well. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.